Greetings everyone, welcome back to yet another game commentary video with me, Kemze. Today we shall chatter about the settlers' heritage of kings. Now, um, before I start, do lean back, lay down and grab something to eat and drink as we shall be chattering about this lovely game. And of course, uh, give out our opinions, thoughts and hints and tips and tricks, whatever you want. If you do have those as well, feel free to drop it down in the comments box below or add me on Steam and we can have a chit chat about it. Now, um, we're starting now here also in the loading screen of the Settlers Heritage of Kings Legends expansion disc because, you know, this is where we have ended and finished the campaign. Uh, I have really enjoyed the entire series. Sure, there has been some points which I was like thinking this is really annoying. And apart from that, there's also been some points which I was like thinking like why do they have not done it a bit differently. For example, here in this expansion with the Legend one, there was no voice acting at all in any of those four campaigns. Apart from that, I do find the expansion one with Carla and, uh, you know, the Shrouder people, uh, its campaign was more interesting than these ones. Even though in the um, Wish Vision of Light one, it was a bit more interesting. We got all the plentiful resources we just had to build up. We got some different missions than always, you know, building up our base and just attacking. Sure, it's some tr strategy, but, you know, there should have been some more different ways of victory. Not just entirely always destroying the enemy's base, even though that it's an RTS game. But also sabotaging and all that, it shouldn't mean that interesting as well. I find this Settlers Heritage of Kings one of my, um, well, partly favorite Settlers game. Even though the Settlers 4 is more interesting, but it takes even a longer time than the Heritage of Kings. But, um... This one is more nicer because of the graphics, it's more fun, there's a lot being kind of a medieval vibe present in there, like even though that the cannons and um, archers are a lot more overpowered, archers are special, like you guys have seen that I always used archers because they had a long distance and they could kill them easily. Though that the pathfinding felt like a little bit more longer as well and I felt like this is going to be more interesting if we had more fights going on because the AI basically stood when I was shooting and took some long time to come around. I would have wished that we had more time to build bases and fight against each other and just continue on charging and charging because the maps were big, we'd explore everywhere and it took us a while to go around. It would be more interesting if we had some mines already, we build up, make some trees, fight each other and just go on ahead. But the AI didn't do that, so it would be really interesting if they did so. But, you know, it was a nice game, and uh, we all have our different opinions. Many dislike this version of the Settlers, and I respect that opinion. And, of course, I myself find it favorable that it is quite interesting to continue on playing this entire campaign. Like, we also have still, like, custom maps to go through as well. But I'm going to skip those. Maybe in the future I'll do them. I don't know. Maybe not. Who knows? But there's also some maps which you can play also on coach, uh, uh, on, um, how should I say, on um, multiplayer. You can play with your friends as well, which is really cool. Like... It is not really that active at the moment. I know that you can play it through Game Ranger or so, if I'm right. But it will be really nice to play that through as well. Even though it's an old school game of an uh, old school RTS game. But still, it's interesting and fun. Like, hey, it's been made in around 2004. It seems I don't know. I'm not sure. But then again, it's nice. The voice acting is cool. Pretty nice as well, in my opinion. And the graphics, it's fine for me too. The music quite... Suitable. I think it's suitable for this kind of game and it's fun. The campaign, once again, it's really nice and cool to go through, especially the first settlers. The ex I mean, the settlers, it's, um, you know, Heritage King, the basic one. And then expansion is fun, but as I said, in Legend 1, it became a bit lame that we couldn't hear any voice acting there because it would be really nice to hear it. Like, I don't know if I was giving a nice expression of a uh, way I read it, but it's okay, I guess. Furthermore, I don't really have much else to say that I am, uh, well, it has, it could be more nicer to elaborate, more story-wise, more, um, 
mechanics. The mechanics were fun as well. It just reminds me of Silver Settlers 4 and all, but I don't know. I just didn't feel too much electricity, but it was a fun game. It was nice. And every game has like a specific kind of um, electricity. And I had an electricity here by ruling over kingdoms, bu building up a lot of big economy and all. And it was really interesting and it was cool to see. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm going to give it a score from a skill 1 till 10. It's going to be a number 8, mainly because it took quite a lot of time and the maps were really big at times. But it's fun. So, that's just a thing for me and it just doesn't really have that much of an online um, thing. Like, a uh, people that are playing this, which is truly sad to see. But I don't know if it's even functional, but I think it's not only in Game Ranger it is, but, you know, it's alright. I just hope that the new Settlers will be a lot more epic and all that. We shall see about that. But we shall be playing the other Settlers too, Rise of the Kingdom and all, and Path of the Kingdom. We shall see how those shall be too. But for now, this shall be it, and that's my score. So if you did agree to it, give it a like button. And uh, if you don't, then feel free to drop it down in the comments box below why and what, and what other opinions you have about it. And we can have a chit chat about it, or add on Steam is also possible. But for now, I shall see you guys later. But before I also end this video, I really want to give you guys a quick notification. This has been recorded also entirely through the History Edition, which you can buy via Ubisoft, which will include all Settlers games they have released till now. So the new Settlers, which is Settlers 8 if I'm right, isn't included there. But uh, the Settlers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which is this one, and of 6, Rise of Kingdoms, and uh, Path to Kingdom, which is number 7, is not uh, is included there. So feel free to check it out on Ubisoft, and you'll be able to buy it, of course, through them. Or you can crack it, which I'm not really encouraging, because, you know, you can get in trouble depending on which uh, laws they are presenting your country, and, of course, with the developer himself, because they're not really keen of them. But apart from that, I do want to notify you guys that the History Edition has a little bit of graphical and visual changes, plus that they included the Legends expansion disc, which I haven't really played ever, even though that I have played the Settlers Heritage of Kings back in the day when I was young, but it didn't have it included in Steam, so I have had fun to go through this, and it was quite new to me, and it was fun. But um, do feel free to check it out, the History Edition, because I would really advise you to buy it through the Ubisoft. As in Rise of Kingdoms, there's also a few expansions that are also included inside that pack when you buy it through there, which I haven't really seen through Steam or any platform myself, but that's my eyes, which, you know, my sight so far I've seen. But if you guys can find it out, uh, find another way of buy, uh, buying a web browser shop or any shop in your local store that does include it, feel free to buy it and play it and of course have fun. But um, yeah, that's it. So I'll see you guys later.